Excited to come and and, um, and be in God's presence tonight, and um, excited that you have joined me tonight, and um, we give the Lord praise, and we give Him all the thanks tonight. I want to come to you real quick. I'm not going to be on long tonight, but the Lord put in my spirit tonight to come and 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 uh, and, and first thing I want to let you know is that as I always start a lot of my messages is that God is still fully invested in your life. I want you to know all heaven is still on your side. I want you to know God has not planned any defeats for your life. I want you to know that God desires above all things that you prosper, that you be in good health, even as your soul prosper. I, I like to let the people know that, that God is not concerned with what you've done. God ain't worried about your past. I try to let people know that God is always concerned with what we are doing. The nugget about that is what you're doing determines what you do. What you're doing today determines what you'll do tomorrow unless you make a change. And for all of us, God is always trying to change what we are doing. If God can change what you're doing, it changes what you do. I, I, I like that. I like that. And I, I, I always like to let the people know that real change comes from the inside, not from the outside. A lot of times you hear people say, if that person, if, 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 if my job situation can change, change will happen for me. If, 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 if I can get more money, if, if, uh, if, if people, if my boss stop treating me bad, then I can do this. And we look for change on the outside. Now, whenever you change on the outside, it things might change on the outside, but if it only changes on the outside, it's only temporal. It's only temporary. It's not a permanent change. Real change going to always come from the inside. And whenever you make up your mind to change, because when you get, when your mind changes, it doesn't matter whether the inside, whether the, whether the outside changes or not. It's just like people who bother you. When, when you begin to change on the inside, it doesn't matter if that person treats you right or don't treat you right. Because you have already changed on the inside. Real change will always come from within. And so a lot of times we want to put the pressure or we want to put the focus on the things outside of us. Jobs, money, people. And, and, and most of the time those things won't change. But the real change is going to come from the inside. One of the biggest things that stops us from changing is ourselves. We, we come to a place to like what we like, to want what we want, to feel what we feel. I like to say that my biggest enemy is not the devil. Now the devil will take credit for anything that you give him. <laughs> if you say he made you stump your toe, he'll jump up and say, yeah, I sure did. He'll take credit for whatever you, if you want to say he, 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 he made you do it, then he'll take the credit for it. But what I found out in my own life is a lot of the things that I was blaming the devil on and the devil was taking credit for it, it wasn't the devil at all. What I have come to that place to do in my life is to learn that my biggest enemy is, wasn't the devil, my biggest enemy is that inner me enemy. The person that looks back at me in the mirror. You got to hear me tonight, Zion. That person that looks back at me in the mirror has caused me more hurt, more disappointment, more let down than the devil could ever do. He's caused me to miss more blessings, to be out of position, to be out of place than the devil could ever cause me to miss. And I've come to that place in my life to, to start taking authority 
over that person, that joker, that looks back at me in the mirror. I want to be real before you tonight. There are times in my life I have to talk myself out of doing the wrong thing and talk myself into doing what's right. You don't mind me being real. I have to talk myself out of it. Because there's one person that you will let use you, that you will give more pity to anyone else. There's one person that you will let cause you more hurt, let down and pain than anyone else. You know who that person is? That's right, self. You pity yourself more than anyone else. You allow yourself to hurt you over and over. And you ask yourself, why did I let myself do that? Why did I do that? Why did I allow that to happen? What in the world was I thinking? I want to encourage you. We've been talking a lot about the Holy Spirit. We've been talking a lot about your spirit nature, your spirit man, building up your spirit man. And all this is in the lines of that tonight. And again, I'm not going to be before you long, but I just wanted to come. The Lord pressed upon my heart to come and just encourage you and him tonight uh, with this um, special message tonight. And another thing I want to say before I really get going is don't be, watch the negative people that you hang around or or uh, watch all the negative, uh, negative things that people say. Don't be a trash can. For people, negative garbage. Yeah, that's that's what I want to encourage you tonight. The Lord told me, I don't know who I'm talking to, but encourage your friends to watch what they're saying. Watch what they're speaking out of their mouths. Because we're praying prayers. We get we ask people to pray, we and, and, and we're praying prayers, but yet if the words that I speak don't line up with what I'm praying, then I'm canceling out my prayers through the words that I'm speaking out of my mouth. You can't, you can't pray for prosperity or, and you're speaking. You can't pray for life and you're speaking death. Oh, you got to hear me tonight. And I'm going to come back another time and, and, and really teach on that in its entirety. The, the word of God says in Ephesians 4.29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may ministers, minister grace to the hearer. And I'm going to come back and teach on that. A dear good pastor friend, and I, I be with them quite often at a Believer's Bible Christian Church, uh, Pastor Theo McNair, I heard him say, and I've often said it, he said, uh, don't say nothing out of your mouth that you can't put on the end of it, and that's what I want. Boy, I'm going to come back and teach on that thing. That's good. He said, if you can't say on the end of it, that's what I want, don't, don't speak it out of your mouth. <laughs> you know, if you speak it, well, I got a bad headache, you might as well say at the end of it, that's what I want. Are you getting that tonight? Speak those things that are edifying. You got to speak life and not speak death. The Bible says life and death, death and life is in the power of our tongue. So you got to watch what you're saying. And don't align yourself with so many negative people. If you got friends and they're always talking negative, encourage them. Stop them. And say, hey, listen, listen, my dearest friend. Be kind about it. I don't, I, let's speak some positive things today. Let's speak positive. Let's speak the word of God. Let's not speak out of our feelings today. Let's not speak out of our emotions and, and speak out of our flesh today. But let us speak those things. Let's speak what we're praying. Begin to speak it. The Bible says that we can speak those things that be not as though they were. And it shall come to pass. And many times throughout the Bible, you'll see that Jesus spoke and it came to pass. He often spoke the past tense of that which was coming. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. 
So I just want to encourage you. I'm, that's not my message for tonight, but I'll come back again and, and teach on that a little later. But if you're going to speak it out of your mouth, be able to speak. And that's what I want. I'm healed. I'm already healed. And that's what I want. I'm the head and not the tail. And that's what I want. My sons and my daughters are serving the Lord with all their heart. And that's what I want. You, are you getting what I'm saying? Speak life. I know people say, well, I'm just trying to be real. Being real is speaking the word of God. I said that last week. That's the truth. Being real is speaking what God says, not what your flesh says, not what your body says, not, not, not what your feelings say. Come on, say amen. Praise God. So I'm going to put that. Don't, don't be a negative. Don't be a trash can for people negative garbage. Even when it comes to the news. Say amen. When it comes to that television. We already know about that. So be encouraged tonight, Zion. And so what I really wanted to get into tonight, I talked a little bit last time about aiming high when it comes to your relationship with God. And I want to just kind of finish up, finish up with that tonight. Aiming high. Aiming, aiming, because you hear people say, well, I, I, I haven't arrived yet. Well, none of us have arrived on this side anyway. Well, God is still working on me. Well, God's going to be working on all of us until we get on the other side. But don't let because God is still working on me give you an ex give you give you an excuse not to be who God's calling you to be. And that's why I want to encourage you tonight that God will never ask you and I to do or to be something that He has not given us the ability to do or to be in. And I want to encourage you in that tonight. God has given us every tool that we need to be who he's called us to be. Well, I know the last time I mentioned, well, I'm not what I ought to be, what I ain't what I used to be. Do you mind me telling? Well, you should be what you ought to be. Let what you ought to be be your aim. Not what you used to be. Oh, y'all, come on here, Zion. Let what you ought to be. What I'm saying is, don't come to a place where failure is common. Where, well, you know, we all have sinned and come short of the glory. Yeah, but, but, don't, but don't let coming short be, the, be your aim. Want to reach the mark. Aim at, at fulfilling God's plan. Aim at, 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 at doing what God's calling us to be. And aim, aim at doing what God's calling you to do. Aim high. I know people say, well, well, there's no one, no one perfect. But in Matthew 5:48, it says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. God says, you can, he, said, he said, be perfect. Even as your Father in heaven is perfect. What are you saying? Don't let imperfection be your aim. Don't aim for imperfection because you hear people say no one's perfect. I'm encouraging you this with this tonight, Zion, because there's going to come a time, and we're, we're in that time, you're going to have to really know God for yourself. You're going to have to really know God spiritually. The Bible said those things that are born of the flesh is flesh. Those things that are born of the spirit is spirit. And I want to show you this tonight. As I get on, getting ready to bring this to a close. If you have your Bibles or you can go to it another time. Ephesians 2 and 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created, and Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. I, boy, I could take this whole thing, but for the sake of time, I'm only going to take just a little bit of it tonight. It says, Ephesians 2 and 10, it says, for we are his workmanship. Now, what I'm going to do right there, I'm going to put everybody that, 
the, the scripture is talking about put them in first persons. So if I say for we, first person is going to be I. So I'll say for I am, his will be God. So for I am God's workmanship. workmanship. I am God's handiwork. I am God's perfection. God made me. <laughs> I am God's original masterpiece. So it says, for I am God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. For just for tonight, when I come back, I'm going to talk about this scripture in, in its entirety. But just for the night, I want to focus created in Christ Jesus. I want to put this in your spirit. This is what the Lord had me to do tonight, really. The reason he had me come on tonight is to put where you, were, you and I was created. It says, created in Christ Jesus. Zion, so I want to bring this to your attention. This part of the scripture, created in Christ Jesus, is telling us where you and I was created. We were created in Christ Jesus. This is what I want to add. Where you and I was created is different from where we were born. You got to get this. Where we were created is different from where we were born. You got to get it. We were created in Christ, but we was born in the world. We were created in Christ, but we were born in the world. Where we were born and where we were created are two different places. Two different places. You got to get this. What I'm saying, I'm saying to you that we were spiritual beings before we became human beings. Created in Christ is in the spirit. Born in the world is in the flesh. Human being. I, you and I, we were and still are spiritual beings before we became human beings. We are spiritual beings before we became human beings. Our natural place of our natural habitat is in the spirit. Oh, Zion, I got I, I to gotta help you with this. Our natural habitat, you know what? And, 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 and Jesus went on to say, he went on to say, he says, he says, I, in Jeremiah 1 and 5, he says, before I formed thee in the belly, before you got in your mother's womb and came out as a human being, he says, before I formed you there, he said, he said, he said, that's why. He said, I sanctified thee and at, at thee in the womb and I ordained thee. He says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Because he created us in himself. I like this because he created us in himself. We were created in Christ Jesus. And it was Christ Jesus that formed us in our mother's womb. Oh, I love that. That's why he says, I, I foreknew you before you became a human being. I knew you and the spirit being that we are. Wow. That's, that's good stuff. I understand. We, we, we gain knowledge of the human being first because we came out we didn't know all this had gone on. We came out and we began to learn of Christ. We began to learn of that spirit man. And when we came out, we came out with no gaining knowledge of that human being. And then we began to learn and, and begin to follow the ways of God. And we found out that, oh man, there's a spirit man. Wow. What do I know about my spirit man? I know more about my human man than I do my spirit man. 
And that's why the Bible comes along and it says, I believe in Romans 12, 2, it says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of a mind. Now I got to renew my mind to my spirit man. I got to renew my mind. I got to start learning the, 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 the ways of God. I got to start learning about my spirit man. And I like what the Bible says. The Bible also lets us know. He says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. When, when, when Christ is, when, when they're saying that, a lack of knowledge of the world? No. A lack of knowledge of knowing who God is, of knowing who God created, who he created you to be. Your spirit man, knowing God in the spirit, growing in your spiritual relationship with God. That's the lack of knowledge what people perish from. Because most people don't even ever really get to the spirit, but every now and then. Instead of coming to a place to allow themselves to dwell. To dwell in the spirit of God. I know this is a little deep for some of you tonight. But God pressed upon my heart to put this in your spirit. Because most people think, well, if I'm going to function in this world, I got to function in, as a human being. I want you to, I want to let you know, because most people say, well, can I go on my job and still, and, and do the work that I'm supposed to do in the spirit? Yes, you can. Can I go to a meeting and, 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 and have a meeting? And, 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 and stay in the spirit of God and still dwell? Yes, you can. What better way to go into a meeting? What better way to dwell, to, 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 to live in this world than dwelling in the spirit of God? What better way to, 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 to have a meeting being led of the spirit than just led of knowledge of this world? Hosea, I, I know this is deep, and maybe I, I, I know many people have gotten off because I know they, they, they are used to me worshiping, and I love to worship. I love, I love singing. I love that. But true praise and true worship don't come when you got a song on your lips. Oh, God. That's not true praise and true worship. Just because you can sing a song or you like songs and you love to sing. Oh no, true praise and true worship don't start with a song song. It don't start even with a note playing on a piano. True praise and true worship starts with your lifestyle. You got to hear me in the spirit. I got to put this in you. I got to give this to you tonight. And I'm almost done. That's what true praise is when you begin to grow spiritually. You and I, we are spiritual beings. Having a human encounter. We're spiritual beings. We were created in the spirit first. I like to say this, and I've said it before. A Christian out of Christ is like a fish out of water. A Christian out of Christ is like a fish out of water. In Christ is my natural, that's why I was created. That's my natural habitat. To dwell in the spirit of God. A Christian out of Christ is like a fish out of water. I want you guys to give me some comments. How, how, how is a fish out of water? What's happening to a fish out of water? I want to see your comments on here. Somebody tell me. What's happening to a fish? A fish out of water. Come on here. A fish out of water. What happens to it? Mm-hmm. Come on here. Can't survive. That's right. He will die. Uh-huh. That's right. He suffocated. That's right. Yeah. He's lifeless. He's struggling for life. Yes. He's dying. He is choking and dying. 
Now we're talking about, we're talking about just as a fish out of water, the same thing is happening to Christians out of Christ. Can't breathe. They will die. Can't breathe. He's out of his element. Yes. You're getting it. He's breathless. Can I tell you something, Zion? The Bible says that there's a real adversary. There's a real enemy. And the Bible says he's as a roaring lion. Thank God for that. He's a, he's a toothless lion. He's a, but, 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 but to a, a Christian out of Christ, guess what? He is just as much scary with no teeth than he would be with teeth because you don't know what he's going to do he's a, he, when you're out of Christ. And the Bible says there's a real adversary that's seeking whom he may devour. He's looking for Christians out of Christ. Yeah. Oh, Zion, you got to hear me tonight. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying we got to get back to our natural habitat. I believe I believe that life, even now, pandemic, sicknesses, diseases, hurts and heartaches, trials, tribulations. If ever there was a time to tap into where you were created, to tap into that spirit man, now is that time. I believe, Zion, you're going to have to come to really know God for yourself. Thank God for the men and women of God and friends who will pray for you. But you're going to have to know him for yourself. And what I love about God is God, don't, God has no respect to a person. As soon as you say, God, God, I want you, God says, here I am. All, all heaven is right there for you. God doesn't hold anything back. God don't say, well, you had served me like this. You should have. God says, here am I. Here am I, daughter. I'm here, son. I love what God does when God manifests. He manifests God. He doesn't say, I'm going to manifest just a little bit tonight. Everything you need. He doesn't say because you, had, you hadn't done all you could have done, all you should have done. God says, here am I. All of me, I'm here. I don't want you to perish for a lack of knowledge. And that's what God is doing for us tonight. He's meeting us here to put this word in your spirit tonight. Will you receive this word tonight? Will you receive tonight to be encouraged? I want to, I, I don't want to perish. I want, I want to, because see, it's one thing that's to go to church and let me just, let me put this, put this in your spirit. There should be a transformation taking place. As you continue to go to church, you should be transforming and coming to a place now. Not only are you going to church, but now you are transforming into the church. Got to get it. Because most people, most people, you hear them saying they're going to the church. I'm all right with that. I'm not going to come against you on that. But at some point, you ought to be the church. You should become the church. Are you getting that? It's just like you hear people say, I hear a lot of praise and worship ministers and I because I, I don't call them worship leaders, and I'm not against people doing that, but there's only and I'll put this in you put this nugget with you. There's only one worship leader, Zion. Can I tell you? There's only one worship leader, and, and that worship leader is the Holy Spirit. Because he's the only one that can lead all of us into all truths. Me 
Even in my most anointed self. I, I could be so anointed that I'm floating across the room and still have imperfection. You better hear me today. And still falter. And still error. I'm not a worship leader. I, I, could, I, I call, I, I, the Lord put in my spirit, I'm a worship minister, but not a worship leader. I'm a worship minister who, a worship minister who follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Because he's the only one that's qualified to be a worship leader. He's the only one that knows everything. He knows the whole story. I don't know the whole story. I don't even want to, I don't want the job of a worship leader. I rather stay right there in the place that God has called me to be. A worship minister. So I'm saying that to say, you hear people say, I'm a praise and worshiper. I'm a praise and worship a, 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 a psalmist or however they describe themselves. A lot of them say worship leader, but I, I don't believe in that. Uh, I believe in a worship minister. But you hear them say it. At some point, there should be a transformation. At some point, you should go from doing praise and worship to now you are praise and worship. Are you getting this? I know this is tight tonight. At some point, there should be a transition. No longer am I going to church, but now I am the church. I'm coming, I'm coming into the knowledge. I'm growing into the knowledge. I am the church. You are the church. No longer am I just doing praise and worship. Because you can just do and never be. No longer am I doing praise and worship. But now I am becoming and continue to become Praise. I am praise. I am worship. When I walked in, worship walked in. When I walked in, praise walked in. You got to hear me, Zion. And can I tell you something? I'm going to close here. There's a search sound. There's a search sound that comes in doing praise and being praised. It's two different sounds. Because there's a sound of worship and there's a sound of true worship. If worship makes a sound, true worship has to make a sound. One is the sound of man. The other one is the sound of God. What sound do you have? I, 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 I know you like praising. I know you like songs. But what sound do you have? I know you can sing up one side or the other. I know you can play up one side. You know, I said, I said something to uh, some people not too long ago. I said some, I say to worship ministers when I meet them and, and I say to them, I say to them this, come to know when it's you playing and when it's the Holy Spirit playing. This is tight. Share this with your worship ministers, people that you know. Come to know when it's you singing and when it's God singing. When it's the Holy Spirit singing through you and when it's you singing. Come to know that because you got to come to know the difference. If you don't ever come to know the difference, you'll always listen to you. You better hear me. Well, this is a good stuff tonight. If you come to know the difference when it's you get up there singing and when it's the Holy Spirit singing. You'll never want to hear you again. Oh, this is good. If you play, if you if you don't ever come to know the difference when it's you playing and the Holy Spirit playing, you will always play. But boy, if you ever hear that Holy Spirit play through you, you'll never want to play again. You always say, Holy Spirit, have your way. Sing through me. Speak through me. When you come to a place to hear the, I'm not talking about when you when when you're feeling your help. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about I'm talking about when you know it's the Holy Spirit speaking and then and, and, and you speaking because we're we're good in what we do. When when come to know the difference, but you gotta see there's a certain place you have to get 
in the spirit to know the difference between the two. If, if you don't ever come to know the difference, you'll always get up and preach. You'll always get up and sing. You'll always get on the, on the, on the, on the uh, instruments and play if you don't ever come to know the difference because you never heard it. Can I tell you something? The, the reaction or the response of the congregation does not signify the level of the anointing. I'm going to say that again. The reaction of the crowd, the response of the, of the congregation does not indicate or does not signify the level of the anointing. Because people can shout all over the place and you have not been anointed no more than anything else. This is good stuff tonight. So I'm saying to you guys, you, you musicians and you, you praise and worship ministers, come to know the difference in the two. You preachers, come to know the difference. I know you good. I know you can preach. But come to know the difference when it's you preaching and the Holy Spirit preaching. If you ever come to know the difference, you'll never want to hear you again. You will always want him to preach. You will always want him to sing. You will always want him to play. As I begin to close tonight, thank God for those who stayed on with me tonight. And um, I just encourage you in the Lord tonight. You and I are spiritual beings. The Bible said those things born of the flesh is flesh. Those things that are born in the spirit, we were created in Christ. That is your natural, that is my natural habitat. People perish for a lack of knowledge. Not a lack of knowledge of worldly things. Not street smart. But the lack of knowledge of who they are in Christ. Strengthening and growing their spiritual relationship in the Lord. So that pair prepare to close tonight. We just give God praise and give Him thanks tonight. Father, we bless you tonight. <laughs> you know, the Holy Spirit said. Set your affections on things above, not on this earth. What is it? Put your energy and strengthening, developing your relationship with the Lord. He knows you, He has the answers. For all that we need and desire tonight. Father, we thank you. Uh, I will put my trust you alone. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
we've come to know in this world. We thank you for a new revelation tonight. Come on, Zion, pray. We've been led around by hurt, disappointment, let 